you have to explore. You have to explore how far you can go with your art. But if you don't, I don't believe. I believe if you don't have a core skill that you can go to every day of the week, in every moment, and every day, um, that you can trust in, then how can you use your variations? Because um, ultimately, when we're under pressure, what do we default to? We default to who we know, who we are, and what we know. As a spinner, do spinners mature uh, later? I think in terms of spin, the, the skill part of maturing is different again, where you just need to, the way I like to put it, you just need to bowl enough balls. Um, and by 23, 24, I know I hadn't, um, not at the highest level. You know, and that's that's the one thing. It, it's You need to be able to bowl enough balls at the highest level. Why well, I say the highest level, the, the level you're at to be able to go on to the next level. It's a bit like a um, a computer game or a PlayStation game. You need to do it time and time again to pass the level before you then go on to the next one. And and I think that's where the maturity, that word maturity comes in, is it's the skill maturity and understanding, right, what is it that I've got? How do I use it? And why do I use it when? Um, and then once I've understood that, right, I go to the next level and I do it all again. So is it just a case, as, as people do say, you do all the bowling in the nets, but nothing matches that game intensity. N nothing, nothing matches game intensity, but there's also a very big space for bowling in the nets and bowling at training. And, and that's another learning opportunity. I think what, what we as people do, we'll tend to play games and look at outcome. Um, and we forget about how the process works, which is where training is so important because that gives us opportunity to look at how our processes are and how we affect them under pressure. And there's ways to put people under pressure at training um, and put yourself under pressure. So to be able to do that, emulate it, so that come game day, it just becomes second nature. And then that's what I mean by bowling enough balls is so that when you come to play games where it does get pressure moments, um, you've bowled enough, you've understood enough about who you are and what you are, that when it comes to competing, you can just go and compete. You know, you can just play the guy at the other end. Do you have any tips for youngsters, say club cricketers, that want to emulate that type of pressure that, you know, when they go out on a Saturday, that, they, that they're not really, at the moment, replicating during their training, anything they can do? Rocking up the training with a plan, uh, working out, right, what is it exactly I need? Um, and to be able to do that, you have to have to explore a lot of different avenues to work out what it, ex what it is exactly you might need as an individual. Um, for me, it was I needed to work on my core skill every day. I needed to work on my Red Bull what, what is the perfect delivery for me? Um, and I need to make sure that that was down packed every day before I went into a, a challenging session where I wanted to get guys out or I wanted to um, set KPIs or uh, put cones down and work out um, what my percentages were. Um, get people to chat, to video me, challenge me with, you know, where my action is, how the ball's coming out, what is happening at the other end. And they're all different things that I would do at different times of the week. Um, or, or the year, uh, you know, some days I just didn't want to do anything because I didn't feel it was going to help me. And to be able to get to that point is a pretty strong position to be in, um, to be able to say, look, today I'm not bowling today or I, I don't see the point in it because it's not going to help me. Um, but there's other, plenty other days, I will say, you know, there's probably three, there's only probably three or four days in a year you could say that, but most of the other days that, um, you know, there's always something to work on. Can you talk about the subtle differences you had in terms of variations? So obviously you've got your stop ball, but then what other things did you have in your armory that perhaps one like myself looking on in the TV didn't really pick up on? Yeah, look, I mean, it's there's no it's no um, amazing feat or anything. It's, you know, no rocket science, but to be honest with you, it's all just angle of seam. So for us spinners, you know, ultimately want our scene to be at 45 and, um, especially in England anyway, we want it to be at 45 because there is most of the time it spins, I feel, but we still need to get the ball to bounce. Um, so to get the ball at 45 degree and to be able to get the ball to land on, on the seam at 45 degree is probably perfect. And then being able to change that angle. So therefore, uh, the more it gets to, to 90, the more obviously um, more topspin we put on it more sides but we put on it that way so are we asking the ball to spin more and bounce less or are we asking the ball to spin less and bounce more 
and that's probably you know that's that's it with those angles really it's there's no much more than that there might be a little arm ball which is different again for different guys how they access that some like to get the ball to come out the front of their hand and get it to shape a bit more some like to get it to come out like a saucer um and the theory behind that is a bit like baseball where it should if you get enough revolutions on it it should start to rise but a cricket ball is different to a baseball um you know and it's a shorter pitch so it doesn't have that time but ultimately it looks it looks shorter than it is um probably plays when you when the ball comes out perfectly with that slider it probably looks shorter than this the guys go back more often when it is actually a ball to go forward to what are your views on youngsters trying to develop the ball that goes the other way you know, as an offspin of the Dusra? Maybe it's the Murali and Ashwin influence, but is that something you would encourage a youngster to work on as well? Or would it just be a case of mastering your stop ball, your, your craft, and then, then working on the subtleties after? I mean, it's a good question. You know, kids these days can do whatever they want. Um, like for me, it's, it's a bit of both. You have to explore. You have to explore how far you can go with your app. But if you don't, I don't believe, I believe if you don't have a core skill that you can go to every day of the week, at every moment and every day um, that you can trust in, then how can you use your variations? Because um, ultimately when we're under pressure, what do we default to? We default to who we know, who we are and what we know. Um, and so therefore we need to be able to make sure that that skill is as best as it can be and i was watching the all blacks the other day and they were they were talking about how um their basic skill was a lot better than the weekend before where they're catching their passing and and that's what i'm talking about is that their basic skill what is their basic skill if i'm a league spinner what is my basic skill and and can i nail that all the time um before i start to look at how am i going to bowl my wrong and um my slide on my zoot or whatever they want to call it um and the same with same with finger spinners as well. Now, these guys who are at their at their peak understand their core skill, and they know I like to call it core skill or stock ball. They know it so well that they can then start to add into that. But they also know when adding into it, there is that level of um, the, there is an ability for that to affect our stock ball. So we have to make sure that we're constantly training that before we also add in these little things but as i said if you're willing to start young enough um you know and you're not when i was trying to do it at 28 29 and almost bust my shoulder um it's a bit stupid then but i think when you're when you're young enough you can explore and go and have some fun because that's what you know that's what cricket is ultimately and as kids you know the one thing i'd love to see is kids back on the street playing cricket again because it's, it's something that's just not done anymore. And, you know, playing in the backyard with all the neighbours around, um, I'd love my kids to be able to do that as well.